A tech fuel rally on Wall Street sees the Nasdaq reverse Monday's losses. The Dow Jones, meanwhile, gains for the first time in seven sessions. Stocks in the Asia Pacific trade mixed, while the SX Nifty is indicating a higher start for the Indian market. Expectations of further rate hikes by global central banks sees crude dip over 2%. Brent trades around $72 a barrel. Strong U.S. economic data also leads gold lower as investors bet the Fed will keep interest rates higher for longer. India's current account deficit for the January to March quarter disappoints comes in at 0.2% of the GDP versus estimates of a surplus of 0.5%. Full year current account deficit also comes in at higher than expected 2%. The biggest transaction in India's corporate history could become a reality in two days. HDFC chairman Deepak Parikh says the merger of HDFC and HDFC Bank may become effective from the 1st of July and expects the HDFC stock to delist on the 13th of July. HDFC also buys 1.5 crore HDFC live shares as it looks to become a majority shareholder in the arm ahead of the merger. The all eyes on the SEBI board meet due later today. The Association of Mutual Funds raises issues with the regulator's total expense ratio proposal, asks SEBI to exclude transaction costs, brokerage and security transaction tax from total expense ratio, citing it could impact the business of mutual fund houses. <coughs> Good morning in the Mumbai News Centre. I'm Sonal Bhutra. You're watching Power Breakfast. It's a Wednesday morning. It is also the monthly expiry today. We do have a lot of queues to talk about. But first up, as always, let's take a look at the Asian markets. They are largely higher in trade. The strong handover that we received from the Wall Street, especially on the Nasdaq front, is something which is exciting the Asian street as well. So we have the Taiwanese index, which is higher by 100 points. Except for Hang Seng and Shanghai, most of the Asian markets are seeing good gains right now. So Hang Seng reversing some of the losses, uh, some of the gains that it saw yesterday. We do have the Taiwanese index, which is in the green. Nikkei is higher by six tenths of a percent. So it is looking decent for the Asian markets, uh, largely mixed, you have to say. If we talk about the SX Nifty, that one is indicating that the start for our own markets, well, that could be in the green. 60 points higher there, and we did see that last hour rally yesterday. Uh, that could continue today as well. And in the U.S. markets, Wall Street ended yesterday's trading session higher. The Dow Jones surged over 200 points. The S&P rose 1.5% and the tech-heavy Nasdaq rallied 1.65%. And let's stay with the U.S. markets uh, and listen into some important voices on the Fed's rate trajectory and the probability of a recession in the United States. I think Powell's guidance last week about it being a slower pace puts the risk that the second one could be at the November meeting. And yeah, I think you have to discount that second one more, given that the trend in inflation is lower and maybe it dissipates more quickly. But we're, we're on two uh, in July and September. We have one next year in the forecast in Q1 and Q2, but it's pretty mild. On a Q4, Q4 growth rate, it's flat for the year. This is, I think, what a soft landing feels like. You have an economy that's still landing, but importantly, avoiding recession. We've dropped our recession probability this year from 40% three months ago down to 25%. Now, importantly, if you avoid recession, as I call it, the S&P 490, which is all the stocks outside the top 10, can have some sort of hope that they didn't have in the, in the beginning of this year. So you can kind of get the underlying stock selection trade. All right, that's the global market action. But how will these overnight queues impact our own markets? We have our research team joining in with what the trade setup looks like, the stocks that are likely to be in the news and the action from the FNO space as well. Uh, but first up, let's talk about all the stocks that are in focus. Abhishek Kuthari is joining us with that list. Abhishek. Uh, well, to begin with, GR Infra Projects uh, Limited is in focus because one of their SPV has seen a recent incident of under construction pillar sinking that occurred on 23rd of July. Uh, this was in uh, one of the project uh, location in Kishanganj over the Meki River. Uh, Titagar Rail System, they have uh, got a letter of agreement for projects worth about Rs. 857 crore from Gujarat uh, Metro Rail Corporation. 
Ramco Cement is in focus. Uh, they have uh, commissions line uh, three at their RR Nagar of 3,000 tons per day capacity of clinkerization. So this is the first integrated cement line commissioned in last 15 years in the south of Tamil Nadu. Uh, Gland Pharma is in focus because US FDA issues 1483 observation for companies Hyderabad's facility. Now US FDA inspected the facility from June 15 to 27 for uh, you know seven products and GMP. SDFC Limited in trade yesterday bought about 1.5 crore shares of SDFC Life at a price of 667.1 per share. So Shalbi is in focus because they have signed agreement with Divine Super Speciality uh, Hospital Rachi to establish an FOSM hospital. So FOSM is franchisee owned Shalbi managed. Back to you. Okay, all right. Um, uh, those are all the stocks in focus. Let's talk about the market queues now. Rima is joining us with that update. Rima. Thanks so much for that. So yesterday, towards the end of market close, we had a big market zooming up. The Nifty conquered that 18,800 mark courtesy uh, the HDFC banking twins. So if you pull up the HDFC uh, banks and the kind of delivery volumes we've seen, in HDFC Bank, it was nearly 1,400 crore rupees. In HDFC Limited, it was 1,500 crore rupees. It was a combination of the merger news and the fact that it was a fin nifty expiry. Today, we've got the June series expiry and the global queues are very positive. So Wall Street had a stellar rally. Uh, technology stocks have rebounded with the Nasdaq ending with a gain of 1.65%. Asian markets are higher this morning. Brent crude prices have eased. If you remember, at the beginning of the week, Brent crude prices were you know, at $74.5 per barrel, and now we're down to $72.5 per barrel. In terms of flows, the DII selling pretty much netted the FII buying, so about 2,000 crore plus or minus, but the gross volumes were also impacted on account of the Sapphire Foods block deal. Uh, in other important news, uh, the Bank Nifty weekly expiry will remain on Thursday. This was a communication sent by the NSC and BSC. So the NSC has withdrawn their earlier circular, which indicated that the Nifty Bank weekly expiry will be pushed to Friday. Now, as before, it will continue to remain on Thursday. And in another important queue for today, SEBI board meet today. It's in the evening where we'll, they will discuss the proposed total expense ratio changes. So this is something the mutual fund industry will be tracking very closely. Back to you. Oh yes, that would be a big change and very important one to track. So that is an important cue. But uh, finally, let me get to Nigel joining in with all the cues from the FNO space. Hey Nigel. Well, morning. Uh, you know, yesterday the bulls were looking for a cue and the HDFC twins, they provided just that. Both of them, they surged in the last 90 minutes of trade. And that's what led the Nifty higher and also the Nifty Financial Services Index higher. Because keep in mind, that's the one that has a high weightage of HDFC Limited as well. HDFC Bank, we know it's already part of the Nifty Bank, but HDFC Limited as well did surge up and trade. Uh, the other point is the India VIX. Well, it ended at its multi-year lows in yesterday's trading session, ended sub-11 uh, uh, odd. And as we know, maybe it's getting a little bit complacent, but you know that's uh, the lowest we've seen in many, many years. What do the FIs do? Well, the queues coming in from there are very, very bullish. And maybe a little bit too bullish. So they added closure on seven longs for every one short position on index futures. And even on stock futures, you know, they added closure on 17,000 long contracts. And there was some big short covering that we saw. The call writers, they got taken to the cleaners yesterday. 18,700 call, 18,800 call. Big unwinding being seen out there. The positioning was such that we don't go past that 18,800 odd mark. However, we did. And that's why we did see big unwinding. Even on the Nifty Bank, you know, there was a fair bit of writing added on that 43,800 call. That as well did come in for some big unwinding in yesterday's trading session. So going by the data points you have, well, you'll have to take that risk. You'll have to buy the Nifty, the Nifty Bank. Expect a good expiry for the bulls uh, today. And, uh, you know, you'll have to trail your stop losses, both on the Nifty. The 20 DME comes up for you on the screen. And on the Nifty Bank as well, we have supports at around the 20 and then the 50 DMA. And we know from the 50 DMA, it's bounced numerous times. SGX Nifty, well, it's indicating we're going to start off closer to around the all-time highs. I think today we get there. Back to you. Okay, all-time high is the level that we uh, that uh, has been watched for with, uh, uh, with a lot of attention. So we'll watch out for that. But time for a short break now. When we return, India's current account deficit for the January to March quarter comes in at 0.2% of GDP versus estimates of a surplus of 0.5%. More on that when we return.
Welcome back. You're watching Power Breakfast here on CNBC TV 18. India's current account deficit for the fourth quarter of FY23 has missed expectations. The deficit number stood at 0.2% of GDP versus market estimates of a current account surplus of 0.5%. Lata Venkatesh joins us now with the details. Lata, take us through the numbers. Yes, that's right. Actually, a 0.2% current account deficit is something we would have grabbed with both hands at any point in time. But the point is, Jan, Feb, March, our services exports did so well that the earlier calculations from data given by Commerce Ministry showed that we may report a current account surplus of 0.5% of GDP. With that expectation, a minus 0.2% or a current account deficit of that order comes as a minor disappointment. The main reason is that services exports, the number released by the Commerce Ministry every month, seems to be a little higher than what has actually come to be. Uh, those are, you know, quick and dirty numbers. The cleaner numbers show that uh, the services exports are more like $40 billion. The earlier Commerce Ministry numbers had indicated close to $45 billion of services surplus. Uh, but the overall deficit uh, at uh, Two uh, percent is not a serious disappointment. It's just a little more than the 1.8 percent for the full year uh, current account deficit that the market was anticipating. Another minor disappointment has been FDI flows. FDI flows have come in at barely six billion dollars in the last quarter. The year ago quarter it was over 13 billion dollars. So it's less than half in uh, the Jan, Feb, March quarter. But that was to some extent expected because uh, we did see risk aversion. FI22 had seen a lot of money from PEs and VCs coming into startups. Uh, that money has clearly dried up. So we should be prepared for, uh, you know, the capital flows in the current year in the form of FDI being a little subdued. However, overall, the ex expectation from economists is that for the current year, FI24, India will report a much lower current account deficit of probably one2 uh, percent of GDP. So no worries really on this account. Thank you, Lada, for making sense of those current account deficit numbers. Uh, very helpful there. Uh, moving on, the Association of Mutual Funds have uh, has issued uh, raised issues with SEBI's proposal on total expense ratio. In a letter, the Mutual Fund Association has asked the market regulator to exclude transaction costs, brokerage and security transaction tax from total expense ratio, citing that these additions will impact the business of mutual fund houses. Note that SEBI is expected to discuss TER norms at its board meet today. Shivani Bazaar joins us now with all those details. Shivani, what are you picking up? Well, yes, ahead of the SEBI board meeting that is likely to discuss the proposed TER changes, CNBC TV18 has learned from industry sources that industry body Amphi has written to SEBI raising pertinent questions over the inclusion of GST transaction costs, security transaction tax, tax and brokerage in the total expense ratio. Amphi has said that the industry is agreeable to add GST to the total expense ratio, even though as a principle, GST being a statutory levy should be charged over and above TER. So Amphi has told SEBI that the tax can be made a part of the TER in such a way that the GST is added at all possible levels. Amphi has further said that the TER slabs in the consultation paper may need further review to add the GST impact at various levels. Further, the industry body has suggested that STT being a government levy should not be a part of the total expense ratio. In the letter accessed by CNBC TV18, Amphi has said that since STT brokerage and transaction costs are levied based on value and quantum of the transaction, it won't make sense to add these to TER. Amphi has said that if the these charges are added to the TER. This could deter fund managers in undertaking investment transactions as there could be a possible breach of the TER limits in high churn portfolios. Industry experts believe that fund houses will have to take a hit on their management fees to avoid the breach of TER limits. Important to note that STT brokerage and transaction costs are levied upfront based on the transaction value, whereas TER is applied on a daily basis, hence annualized. In its consultation paper in May, SEBI had proposed bringing all these charges, including a GST and transaction cost under the ambit of TER. All right, Shivani, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. So SEBI board meet today will be very important to track. Time for a short break. More news and updates will follow on the other side. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. It's time to get you some exciting updates from the auto space now. The all-new Triumph Speed 400 and Scrambler 400 were unveiled in London last evening. Uh, these are the first bikes to be developed by the Bajaj Triumph partnership and will be built by Bajaj Auto in India. The official India launch of these bikes is slated for the 5th of July. Okay, with that, let's get you some weather updates now. Though the southwestern monsoon has covered large parts of the country, the overall monsoon rate in India remains below normal. Several parts of Punjab have reported moderate to heavy rainfall. Meanwhile, in Assam, more than a lakh people have been affected by floods. An orange alert has been also issued for Thane, Raigarh, Ratnagiri, Nasik, Pune and Satara in Maharashtra. Even as parts of the country battle with floods, the delayed monsoon has led to the skyrocketing of tomato prices. The vegetable that was being sold for 3 to 5 rupees per kilogram in May is currently being sold for more than 100 rupees per kg. Okay, of course, this is an important uh, uh, de development and we'll keep getting you more updates on this one. Uh, but for now, we'll quickly take a look at what the Asian markets are doing. As we indicated earlier, largely a mixed picture and that continues to be the case again. Taiwanese index has, uh, see, has been seeing gains of 64 points. Hang Seng has cut some of these losses. Nikkei too higher by 6 tenths of a percent and the SX Nifty will come up for you on the screen because that one is indicating that the start could be in the green. A 50 point uptick and record highs, something that can be expected in today's trading sessions. With that, we'll take your leave on this edition of Power Breakfast. Stay tuned. Bazaar Morning Call comes up next.